Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. In this week's episode... Um... Thanks Doug, or Ollie, not sure. Anyway, we have some amazing paleontology news this week with some pretty exciting developments that I'm sure many of you will already have heard about by now. First up is the naming and description of the new theropod dinosaur Ulugbegsaurus uzbekistanensis, a new kind of carcharodontosaurian from, you guessed it, Uzbekistan. This dinosaur, known from only three fragmentary skull bones, is actually an incredibly important find that tells us a surprising amount about the evolution of the apex predatory dinosaurs of the region. This theropod is the very first record of a carcharodontosaurian from the late Cretaceous of Central Asia, and comparing the holotype and isolated maxilla to the same bones in related dinosaurs, the researchers find Ulugbegsaurus to have been between 7.5 and 8 meters in length, with a body mass of over 1,000 kilograms, suggesting that this was the apex predator of the formation in which it was found, while Dromaeosaurids and Tyrannosauroids known from the same formation would have been the smaller mesopredators. Not only that, but this discovery is also the youngest known example of Carcharodontosaurids and Tyrannosauroids coexisting in the northern supercontinent of Laurasia, indicating how Carcharodontosaurids managed to remain the dominant predators in the north until the Tyronean stage, at least in Asia anyway. It's a very interesting paper and a great new addition to the known Carcharodontosaurian dinosaurs. Also in the recent news is a very cool study published in Nature looking at how the end Cretaceous mass extinction affected the evolution of snakes. Using molecular data combined with data from the fossil record, this paper found that the crown group of snakes, that is the group including all living snakes, their common ancestor and its descendants, actually underwent a major diversification just after the extinction, mainly thought to be due to the colonization of Asia by a large grouping called Aphrophidia, showing how important this extinction was in establishing the modern day diversity of vertebrate life on Earth. And finally for the news this week, as I'm sure many of you will already have heard by now, was the announcement of the founding of a new biotech company that aims to resurrect the woolly mammoth. Well, sort of. The company, called Colossal, was co-founded by geneticist Dr. George Church, who has been aiming to clone mammoths for a while, having done work on this previously, and Ben Lamb, who was also the founder of the AI company Hypergiant. Essentially, the aim of the company, which has a lot of funding behind it, is to use genes from woolly mammoths to create a hybrid, cold-resistant, genetically modified Asian elephant. A population of these mammoth-elephant hybrids would then be established in the Arctic, with the argument being that these animals, as ecosystem engineers, would hopefully help to transform areas of tundra back into the grassy mammoth steppe that existed during the Pleistocene. This, in turn, is hoped to eventually help combat future effects of climate change by slowing down the melting of the permafrost. So, in all fairness, there is a noble aim behind all this, and it doesn't seem to just be for the sake of bringing back mammoths. Plus, they're not going to be actual mammoths, but yeah, let's not get into the ethics of de-extinction here. It's a much more complex topic than we can really cover in a single Seven Days of Science episode. It's just some interesting news. And with that not at all controversial news story, I'll hand you back to Doug or Ollie in the studio. Starting off the news... what the... Oh, never mind. Starting off the news this week, a study published in the journal Nature Communications has had a look at the very early bombardment of our young moon, hoping to contribute further to the growing idea that the initial early bombardments of our moon were much heavier than previously believed. The impact craters from this early time that the researchers were looking at could look very different, as during this time the young moon was still cooling, and therefore the impact sites may not be as large today as they would have been had the moon been as it is today. As the moon has become older and harder, asteroid impacts leave more of a mark. So why is this important? Well, understanding the complete geological histories of the bodies of our solar system can help us understand how our solar system formed in the first place, and how planetary bodies are formed around the universe. In other news, we're staying in space. Well, not quite. Some people are going to space. At 2 past midnight tomorrow GMT, barring future changes, four so-called amateur astronauts will travel to space in a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, using SpaceX's Dragon 2 capsule. SpaceX is the third company to put space tourists into space, but unlike Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic, SpaceX has been commercially contracted to put satellites into orbit for quite some time now, and their capsule has already been used to send astronauts to the International Space Station. In addition, this trip will actually last more than just a few minutes. The capsule will be in space for about three days. 
The person paying for all of this is Jason Isaacman, who hopes that this trip will be the first step in making spaceflight available to everybody, and in the short term, hopes it will help him raise awareness for children's cancer medicine, specifically St Jude's Children's Research Hospital, which he has already supported in the past. One of the passengers he is bringing with him is Hayley Arcano, a physician assistant from the hospital who was treated for bone cancer at the hospital 11 years ago. And this may be the beginning for SpaceX's foray into space tourism, but it won't be the end, as a company called Axiom Space has already ordered four flights for tourists to be taken to the International Space Station with SpaceX. Right, I'm going to try and fix this dimensional problem before we hand over to Alex. Thank you, Ollie. Who would have guessed it? Anyway, now over to Alex, who I know is very excited to talk to you about all the latest health news. That's just rude. 